Pakwach is a town in the northern region of Uganda. It is the main commercial, political, and administrative center of Pakwach district. In the 19th century, the town came under the brief occupation by the Ottoman, tributary of the Kadivet of Egypt. It is approximately 53 kilometers by road east of Nebi, the nearest large town. This is approximately 131 kilometers by road southwest of Arua, the largest city in the Western Nile sub-region. It is along the western bank of the Albert Nile, approximately 120 kilometers by road southwest of Gulu, the largest city in Uganda's northern region. The Gulu Area Road Bridge at Pakwach is the only bridge in Uganda that crosses the Albert Nile. So right now we're heading to Wangli, the place where Jipil and Labongo parted ways. It's said to be a place of wonders, miracles, where an axe comes out of the river when it is so pleases. For the Nailtees who came from Bahel Gazelle and settled in the current day West Nile region before separating and covering three countries, it is a historic site where their centuries old conflicts and hatred is dated back to. For Ugandans, it is a tourist site that tells the culture rich of African tradition, conflict resolution and revenge. It is also a separation point of Nyapil and Labong, the forefathers of the Luo who are spread across East Africa under the management of Jonaham Kingdom in Nebi District, though located with the UPD of Military Detachment. Wangli is located as you enter Pakwach District, 100 meters from the Ugandan Revenue Authority checkpoint and about 50 meters from the main road. Though it's one of the most accessible historical sites in the Western Nile region, later did we know that it would take us three days to access the place. After seeking permissions from the head of the military unit, it was now time for us to get clearance from cultural leaders. We were also told by the cultural leaders that if we would want to see the axe, we are supposed to come in February where the winds are blowing to the northwest. This bridge is the Gulu Alua Road Bridge. It's along the western bank of Albert Nile, approximately 120 kilometers by road southwest of Gulu.
1962 and was finished in 1966. This is the only bridge with a railway line in the middle. Uh, the bridge, the railway line was largely to uh, ferry cotton from Parombo. Uh, it's a serious cotton producing area and uh, the, the bridge, the railway line has remained in the, in the middle of the bridge to this day but because of uh, issues around the country, part of the railway lines have been crossed but we hope that uh, with the European Union funding uh, the railway line will be restored uh, because the government has put up a business hub in Bakwash town uh, that will be a centre for buying goods and services and the centre is uh, nearly open, nearly ready. So the bridge is uh, very strong, well maintained and uh, the family that constructed it uh, from the UK still do maintenance uh, here up to this day. Uh, but the bridge is fine. So you know I cannot repair what you say? Uh, they, 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 they can only call them to come and inspect. So, uh, by 1959, there was a steamer from here up to Nimule. Uh, used to travel. Uh, at the moment, uh, Egyptian government uh, secured permission from CIA. They are planning for the Nile to be navigable from Egypt up to the bottom of the falls. Uh, and they say it's navigable. So, we, uh, my name is Kenneth Oketa. I'm the director of the Lakazi Safaris. We have a safari lodge over there. We have a boat for Alba Nile cruise here. We did a boat uh, cruise to Laropi. Uh, this country, Laropi La is in Ajumena Jumoyo route. If you take a boat cruise from here to Laropi before you enter South Sudan, this country is beautiful. If you reach somewhere there where River Ra and Achua River joins River Nile, you will be amazed. Ra is brown, River Achua is white, and the Nile is dark blue. It has up to Wadilai. Then because of swamps in the middle, uh, the water mixes now. I will not come back. <laughs> we one time tried. Uh, we got in touch with the director of tourism of uh, Kisumu. And we went there by boat. The boat capsized. <laughs> At the GP on the boat side. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a storyteller. I was used to from here up to Kidepo, Kidepo to South Sudan. Uh, but we now with the uh, population growth. We have cut their migratory routes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Yes. Uh, uh, that one I'm, I'm absolutely aware. But given the number, let him arrive. Mm -hmm.
other activities such as feeding the ostriches. Horse raids. So, Abana mubalete koleto mwana watu le kuno wizo kwa no mukazi nga yagana nga eche love yeri kumbala tweka ne banange yuka eche wanko se wantu ziza kumbala siyo Bola watu gamba totia tu na chukia we watu gamba se hey jiriya maya ino leba ita e jiriya maya E jiri ya maya angabu olidaba angabu ya kula na yero manyanti ne maya sebo nene. Maya ye nkoko echa sinzo kuwe nene nyo elanga jamula bawa ne mabiga. E kuma majigayo baga mwomulironga guwa kute. E hizo kuwe neweba mmairo visatwe duke misine ne kuma one savinga. Abana mwono soka nebana angabu. Abaka zini. Mimo kwa gara abana. Dino somori ya maya. Ala maguruga mworinga ga maya. Banage e hizo jiri ya maya. Ala mba. Ala mba. My name is Wilfred Papa. I'm the chairperson of the National Asha Falls Conservancy. The National Asha Falls Conservancy is a registered association of landowners that began way back in 2017. And we've been conserving wildlife. When you talk about wildlife, most people know I say this is falling into but wildlife includes to the environment, to the trees, and the rest of the water. That's why they say there are more wildlife in the community than in the protected area. So here we are on the enterprises of Kizing Valley Dam. This is uh, one of the enterprises, enterprises and uh, Mashon Ashwa Falls Conservancy. Here is popular for two things. One, where we are, you're seeing ostriches. These ostriches are now domesticated. And it's ready for the tourist attraction site. It's one of our enterprises. How many? They lay eggs, they are five in number. But uh, normally, their culture, the, the nature of ostriches, normally, when they lay eggs, they don't sit on their eggs. They keep on rolling their legs. But this place being too hard, uh, it's not.
Well, that's what we got for today. Until next time, bye.